Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and we are back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix Quail and becoming more self-sufficient. I've been doing a few videos about all incubators lie. And so we went through the temp and what to look for and how to fix. We went through humidity, what to look for and how to fix. I wanted to do one extra video about all incubators lying and help you troubleshoot some things that might go wrong that's not as common, but still something to look at. So the two biggest issues with low hatch rates, poor hatch rates, no hatch rates, whatever the case may be, is temperature, and humidity. Those are the two biggest things. It's a very large majority of the time what it is. I don't know an exact percentage. But there's also some things that could happen that is not a temperature or humidity issue. And so if you are having bad hatch rates, you know, it's not going well, and you go, I know the temp is perfect. I've got multiple thermometers in there. I know the humidity is right where it should be. I don't know what's wrong. This video is for you. So we're going to talk about uh, four or five different options, and I hope that it helps you on your journey with Caternix Quail. So let's get started. Um, first and foremost, I want you to completely be aware that all incubators lie. So make sure you have that separate thermometer and hygrometer inside uh, to make sure that you're doing the check and balances and making sure that it's all reading correctly. Now, with that being said, there can be some issues. Number one uh, could be a circulation issue. Uh, if it's not temperature and it's not humidity, circulation typically tends to be the third issue. Um, and what I mean by that is usually either the fan is not working properly, it stopped working altogether, or, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. Now, with that, that means let's say you have your Govee thermometer inside the incubator and it's reading 99.5. And your incubator is rating 99.5 and you're not having good hatch rates. Now, if it's a circulation issue, if you take that Govee and you put it on the opposite side of the incubator, it could possibly be reading 98, 97 degrees because that fan stopped working and it's not circulating through the whole thing. So you might have a small portion that are incubating and, and hatching just fine but you might have other portions of the incubator that are either hot spots or cold spots. So circulating is very, very important. I have noticed that when people start uh, incubating eggs, you know, um, if you've incubated before, you know that there's a lot of dust and dander when they hatch out. There's a ton, right? And most people use their incubator as a lockdown as well, which is completely fine. But with all that dust and dander in there, if it's not properly cleaned, that'll clog that fan up real quick after just a few hatches. So that is one thing definitely to look at if you're having um, low hatch rates. Circulation could definitely be a thing. Another one is a turning issue. Now, this is kind of low on the spectrum, um, but it could happen. So with that being said, um, some people don't, turn their eggs at all, and they, they say that's great, that's fine, um, but there's always exceptions to the rule. So for the majority of the time, it really is very necessary to turn your eggs multiple times a day, preferably with an auto turner. Um, if you need to get by, you don't have to turn them for, for a full hatch or, or two hatches, but ideally, overall, you're having the eggs turn. This is helping them develop fully, have very good uh, muscle muscles when they when they hatch out it helps them develop and thrive once they're born and if they are only laying down or only standing up or whatever the case may be if they're not turning right they're usually attached to one side of the egg and then at lockdown when you're bumping up that humidity and softening that egg that skin gets melted onto the egg and they typically do not make it. And if they do, they are very, very deformed. Um, in fact, turning is actually the fourth biggest reason for any deformities or anything like that. Uh, number one was temperature. Number two is humidity. Number three is genetics. Number four would be turning. Uh, so make sure your turner is working properly. Um, 
you know, you can turn them every two hours, every three hours. If you're hand turning, which I don't recommend you do, um, it's not good to keep opening the incubator up. So it would be better actually to not turn them if you had to open it up. Uh, but if you, if you can auto turn them, you know, every two, three, four hours would be ideal. Um, as long as they're getting circulated multiple times a day. Another issue, uh, if it wasn't temp, if it wasn't humidity, if it wasn't circulation, um, and your turner was working, it could be a bacteria. That is something that you definitely want to look at. So when you use your incubator multiple times, obviously with the high humidity at lockdown, the 99.5 degree temperature, I mean, we're asking for bacteria and stuff to grow inside that, right? So we really want to make sure that it's clean properly. Uh, so make sure that you're washing it out. Use half Listerine, half water. Let it air dry. You know, um, visually look at it. Make sure everything looks good. And uh, just make, you know, be aware that that could be an issue that there's a bacteria growing. Now, if you're using half Listerine, half water, you're cleaning out very thoroughly. That's pro usually not an issue. But, you know, again, on the rare occurrence that that is an issue, I want you to be aware of. It. Um, and then if you're telling me that all that stuff is right, you've got uh, separate thermometers and hygrometers, your temperature's right. There's no circulation issues. It's reading correct. It's reading the same all throughout. Humidity is re is doing just fine. Um, the turner is working. You know the fan is working. Everything is is spot on. Uh, you thoroughly cleaned it. There's no bacteria. Now it has to come down to the eggs. Now with this being said, if they're your own eggs, we can go into in a separate video how to fix that. We're actually going to be doing a video on low fertility, what to look for and how to fix that. Um, but uh, but if they're if they're bought eggs or, or purchased eggs, uh, there's not much you can do, okay? Now, if they're being shipped, that could be an issue. It depends on how they arrived. It could be uh, that they were old eggs. Um, it could be... Uh, that they froze or they overheated. Um, so sometimes that is the case. You know, for example, uh, now I ship out, I'm on pace to ship out about 750,000 eggs this year. Now, with that being said, I've had probably 25 customers out of all those eggs um, that were in the, the, shipping process with the post office for, you know, 8, 10, 12 days. Uh, and we gave it a go and I said, you know, just let me know how it goes. We'll get you taken care of, but they're already there. We might as well try. Um, it happens, you know, uh, so they could be older eggs. That's why we ship same day they're laid every day. So we ship five days a week. Uh, the only day we don't ship is Friday. I don't care what day it is, I'd rather get them in the mail the same day they're laid, and even if it takes the post office five days to get there, we're still good, because the rule of thumb is seven days. So in the first seven days of being laid, fertility is not affected at all. Once uh, seven days is over, so day, day eight, nine, and 10, you lose about 5% fertility, uh, and then every day after that, you start losing about five to 7%. Uh, so then that's when it really starts picking up. Um, out of those customers that tried, about half of them got a decent hatch rate. Um, very small minority of them still got an amazing hatch rate. Uh, and then the other half, you know, just didn't get a very good hatch rate at all. And that's just because, you know what, they were older eggs. And because they were in uh, shipping for so long, they were probably mishandled. So it could be a mishandling issue. It could be this. It could be that. It could be a storage issue. So if you're collecting your own eggs, uh, you know, and you're leaving them outside or the sun can hit them during the day and you are putting them in once a week, whatever the case may be, that could be an issue as well. Um, again, that's a very low uh, possibility, but it is one. And I just wanted to share some miscellaneous things that could go wrong. Because uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a few of you that go, Tim's right, humidity's right. What am I missing here? 
uh, usually it, it's going to be one of the things I just mentioned in that video. Uh, if you have any questions about the hatching process, feel free to ask below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you as quickly as I can. Remember, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, for a live question and answer. You ask the questions, I will do my best to help answer those and help you on your journey with Katernix Quail. Uh, it's more of a community setting, so it's a, a longer YouTube live. Now, on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I go live for a live Q&A again, but this time it is rapid fire. It is question and answer as quickly as I can go uh, because I know that we're all busy, but we've got questions that we need to answer too. So I hope that you're doing very well with your journey in Caternix Quail. I hope that this video will help enlighten you a little bit on getting better hatch rates, and I wish you all the best. So happy hatching. Thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you have gotten anything out of this video, please hit the like button. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of great videos coming your way. Thank you for watching. And until next time, everybody, stay safe.